Hi, this is Kim from Dorothy's Daughter. Well, I never thought we would be here today. I never thought we would still be in Ohio. I never thought that we'd have to cancel our much saved for and awaited trip as I sit here and talk to you, we would have been landing in Cancun right now. And I have an entire me made wardrobe that I was taking with me. I'm not sorry that I have that. They will be used another time. And summer is around the corner. So I have a lot of great summer clothes. So this is going to be a different kind of video today. But then we are all living in very different times. So I'm going to start with a verse, a Bible verse. And yes, I will be having some Bible verses in this video. Um, it's not an intention to, you know, offend anyone, but there's some wisdom there and it applies to everyone, no matter what race, religion, creed, or whoever you are, these words are wisdom. And, um, please take it with the spirit and love that they're intended. Ecclesiastes 3 1 says, For everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. So, for the time we are in right now, the time is to listen to the experts, to do the social distancing they're asking us to do. And for a lot of reasons, most of which worrying about whether or not we could get home. My husband and I made the very hard decision to cancel our trip. So we are in Ohio, but I am thankful. I am thankful that we are healthy. We are happy. We have more than what we need. We found toilet paper at Costco yesterday. <laughs> yeah, well, there's got to be a little humor in this. Um, and there's just many, many things to be thankful for. I have a fabric stash. <laughs> I have working sewing machines. Um, there's so, so much to be thankful for. So I will share all of my Me Made Mexico makes at some point. Most of them you've seen, but some you haven't. Um, but right now, it would be a little sad for me, honestly, to put those on and model them for you. So I'm going to wait just a bit. And um, when it doesn't hurt quite so much, I will um, model them for you, take some photos. Social distancing is a reality for all of us right now. It's a little hard to wrap your brain around, I know. That same chapter in Ecclesiastes shows us that is a time to embrace and there is a time not to embrace. Well, this is apparently our time not to embrace. And so we have to find other ways of staying connected to each other. And it is a time to sew. And that word sew, S-E-W, means to stitch. In that verse, it says there's a time to sew and a time to reap. But S-O-W means to scatter uh, or plant or invest. That's kind of how I take it. So really... We can use our sewing to sew. There's a lot of productivity that can happen during this time if we just focus it in the right direction. So during this time, sewing can be a really productive way to keep your focus. Um, number one, keep hope alive. Number two, bless other people. Number three, plan for the future. And number four, nurture creativity. And number five, learn something new. So it's a time that we can just, you know, what would we have prayed for, you know, a couple of weeks of not having to go anywhere and just be in our sewing room? Hey, really, it's not so bad. <laughs> um, but here are my tips for getting through this crazy time, because I know right now it's a little fun to have some downtime. But by the second or third week of this, we're going to feel... A little isolated we're gonna just wish we could go to, out and do more things I'm not saying don't go and do anything um, I'll get to that in a minute but um, most of us I am in a high-risk group so I will be staying here and um, I will be going between here and my other my other role in life is to be a uh, worship leader at church 
and I also take care of the technology. So I will be between here and the church office, which is like literally a half a mile from my home. And um, I will be between those two places and that's it. Um, I have asthma and I am 62. So I am in that sort of on the borderline of that high risk group, but I'm gonna take it seriously. So I have some tips on um, how you can get through this crazy time. So um, I'm gonna just go through them. One, don't let yourself get depressed. Don't let fear get a foothold. I know, I, have, I am a person who has struggled with fear her whole life. And let me tell you, I have overcome most of it, but not without a lot of work. If you have people in your life that will speak the truth to you, call them up and ask them to check on you. Make sure that you are not letting your fear make your thoughts going crazy. Also, reach out if you start feeling weird about things, if you start having depressive thoughts, and um, if you suffer with this, you know what I'm talking about. Um, turn all your what ifs into even ifs. Um, even if I get coronavirus, God is still God. I have a good chance of surviving it. Even though I'm a high risk group, I'm still not in the highest risk group. Um, we will get through this. And, um, I'm just going to share a verse with you. Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So, notice that says, and minds. So, fill your mind with good thoughts and not fear. Don't let fear take over, okay? I, I know as women, that's how we're cut out. And a lot of us, that's our first thing. I used to be terrified to fly. And I had to work really hard to overcome that. I used to be terrified that something was going to happen to my kids. Um, I struggle sometimes with having panic attacks when I'm driving. So I get it. But please don't let fear get a foothold. Number two, get up, get dressed, put your makeup on, do whatever it takes to feel good about yourself and feel normal. So if normally you get up and you go out and do things, um, get up, get dressed, put earrings on, you know, whatever you need to do to feel good. And I'm not saying, you know, you need to, you know, be all dressed up every day. That's not the point. The point is whatever it is that you do, even if it's just, you know, you get up and get dressed, just do whatever it is that you normally do to feel good about yourself that day. Okay. Three, listen to the experts. They, um, they are trying to make this wave of pandemic be not like this. They're trying to make it be a little easier on our country by taking these measures. They're smart. They're doing some very smart things. Something you might not know about me is that I'm an RN and I worked in intensive care for many, many years before I left nursing and started my photography business. Um, I left nursing to be home with my kids as I was homeschooling at the time, but I am still an RN. I still have a license. And um, what I guess I'd like to say about that is that in my classes, we had um, to take a lot of, you know, public health classes, of course, and we studied pandemics. And we studied that curve they keep showing on TV. So here's the thing. What they're asking you to do is not, oh, stay home so you don't get sick. No, it's not an act of fear. It's an act of love for people that can't fight this. Stay home for them. Because if you go out and then you get it, and then you are exposed to you expose someone else to it, and then they take that to their ninety-year-old grandmother. You know, you let's just consider this being what you can do for the least of these. It's an act of love, not an act of fear. And I think overall, I think our leaders are doing a very good job, particularly our governor in Ohio. I think he's doing an amazing job 
of staying ahead of the curve and um, making his orders, but not seem like martial law or anything, but he's just doing what he needs to do to keep us safe. They want to keep us safe and they want this not to last as long. They don't want us to be Italy. So please listen to the experts. On that same note, if you are a believer in God and read the Bible, my pastor did an excellent message about maintaining hope through this. And I will put the link in the um, description box. Um, I had to start up a YouTube channel for my church yesterday because we've never done anything like that. But since we're not holding services this Sunday, um, the decision was made to put some things online. So his message that he recorded yesterday, it's about 10 minutes long and it's full of hope. So um, if you would like to be encouraged by something like that, go ahead and click that link. Bless others with your sewing. Um, make some summer clothes for your grandkids. Um, make a lap quilt for an elderly relative so that can have some kind of a you know, happy thing in the middle of all this. Um, Days for Girls is an organization that makes feminine hygiene products for girls who don't have any or who can't go to school um, during that time because they don't have the proper hygiene materials. Um, there's one, I think, in every city. I know the closest one here to, I'm in the Toledo, Ohio area, the closest one to here is in Farmington Hills, Michigan, um, but they're all over the place. And they have patterns you can download and make, and then you can donate them to your local Days for Girls chapter to send overseas. So you could be sewing a lot of those and blessing other people. Um, there are hospice people who make teddy bears. Maybe you could get in contact with them. Sometimes they make teddy bears out of a loved one's shirt that has passed. Um, there's a lot of things you can do that would bless other people. Not the least of which is just to sew for your own family. Take this time to, you know, make that summer wardrobe for your kid, your grandkids. Save your children some money and make the kids some great clothes. You have, if you have the time, and honestly, I have enough scraps. I could make a wardrobe for all six of them, probably. <laughs> um, number five, learn a new skill. All right, this is the time, if you're new at sewing, you know, to plug my own thing, but there's other things out there too. Um, go to Friday Sewing School and start from the beginning. Um, learn how to, if you have never made pants before, learn how to fit pants. If you have the time, you're home. Why not learn something new? Um, sew menswear if you've never done it. Uh, Sew a swimsuit if you've never done it. I have a lot of videos on different things like that here, but other others of my fellow sewing vloggers have much of that too. Um, and that's what it's all here for. Um, also, Blueprint has a lot of classes that you could take on different things, other crafts besides sewing even. Um, so definitely take this time to just learn something new. Um, make yourself a killer dress for that date night you're going to have when this is all over. Um, I'm going to use one of my me made Mexico things for that. Um, when this is all over, we're going to have a date night. Now that might not be, maybe you don't have a husband, maybe you're single, but it could be a girlfriend night out. It could be a girl's night out, but I mean, you know, we're all going to like, the restaurants are going to need our support when this is all over. And uh, we're going to have this great date night when this is all over. So, um, and I'm going to use one of my killer dresses that I already made for Mexico. But, you know, that's just an idea. Another suggestion, uh, read some great books. If you're into fashion and you're into history, um, there's a couple of historical books about fashion history. And one of them is called The Gown. The Gown is um, about the sewing of... Uh, Queen Elizabeth's wedding gown, and it um, has a, a real interesting story connected to it, and it's just a fabulous book. I think I've recommended it before, and some of you have told me you've read it and enjoyed it. Um, if you haven't read that one yet, it's wonderful. Another one, I think, is The, the Pink Suit. Um, I'm going to look up the actual title of that and put it down here, but I think it's just The Pink Suit. It's a, uh, about Jacqueline Kennedy, 
and the lady who designed and made the pink suit that she was wearing when President Kennedy was assassinated. Um, and it goes into a whole lot of that whole time frame, the history, and um, our beloved president. And it's one of those days when you know where you were. If you were alive then, you know where you were when that happened. Um, I was in kindergarten, and I remember it being all over TV. It was a traumatic thing for a little kid. And um, everybody has that story of where they were when they heard that President Kennedy was shot. So, And those of you in the UK, I'm sure you can relate. Um, that with uh, Diana. So um, I think it's a similar kind of thing. Um, another, uh, another book that just came out is The Grace Kelly Dress. And I just am cracking that one open right now. But it's about um, the Grace Kelly wedding dress and someone who wanted a dress like that. And there's some weaving in of the story and its history. And um, I think that one's going to be real interesting, too. So those are just three books that um, you could check out. You can use libraries. Libraries uh, might be closed, but the online um, access is not closed. So you can download books into your Kindle. It's super easy. Um, the app you need for that is called Overdrive, and it connects with, I think, almost all the libraries across the country. So um, definitely, if you haven't set that up yet, it's super easy. Get on your library's website and I'll walk you through doing it. Um, number eight, get outside if you can. Take a walk around the block. I can't walk very far because of my injury, but I'm going to take my dog out and walk just a little ways. It'll be good for both of us. And um, breathing in some fresh air is good anytime, but especially during this time of social isolation, we need to get outside, listen to the birds, it's almost spring, y'all, so listen to the birds, watch, look at the sun, feel a little bit more warmth than we felt a few weeks ago. Um, and number nine, you know, this is more online, but join in our wonderful sewing community. If you've not had a chance to, like, jump in on Instagram, Facebook groups, um, a lot of us that vlog here, we have kind of little communities of people that are our subscribers. There are so many fabulous people in the sewing community um, from all different backgrounds, all different faiths, races, um, all over the world. And we have this one thing in common, and that is sewing. And um, for the love, you know, for the love of sewing. And it's a great time for us all to get together, maybe even talk about ways we can help other people. So here's what I'm gonna be doing in the next week or so in my sewing room, at least my plans. Um, as you know, my plans sometimes turn into other plans, but um, I plan to organize my, I have organized my entire stash back here in Trello, but I have not organized my scraps which would be any piece that's under a yard I have in drawers. So I'm going to go through and, you know, organize at least the bigger pieces and hopefully maybe take some of them and sew something for my grandchildren. I have tons of patterns already, so um, that's a no-cost way of, uh, one, using up my stash scraps and also doing something productive for my grandkids. Doll clothes are another thing you could do with your scraps. So um, that's one thing I'm going to do. Um, another thing I'm going to do is there's a new pattern out called the flounce top um, from Ellie and Mac. Um, I've got some fabric from Minerva Crafts that I've been waiting for just the right project to use. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use that. It is some floral mesh, printed mesh. And um, I've got some black knit. I can put it over, and I think that will make a gorgeous uh, flounce top. So um, I may even lengthen it into a dress. I'm going to check out um, how much fabric I have of each thing and see if I have enough to do that. But um, that's my plan for that. I also have this from Minerva that I'm planning an Easter dress with. So I think um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to order some off-white Ponty to put underneath this and I think I'm going to do either a Tessa sheath dress or uh, maybe a Tessa combined with one of the other skirts um, or maybe even use the Margot peplum top and 
do another skirt. So um, that's two, two projects I would like to do for now. Those are things I can wear now as soon as we can go out again. <laughs> Um, I also want to make that new pattern by Patterns for Pirates, that flutter dress. I haven't decided what fabric to use for that yet, but it's really, really cute new pattern that I think looks good on everybody. So I want to try that one. Um, I'm going to finish some UFOs. <laughs> I've got a number of them, and uh, so I'm going to do that. And maybe I'll come up with a sew along for... Um, Friday Sewing School um, and the channel. So um, stay tuned for that. If you have ideas on that, put them in the comments. And um, I hope that these things make you face this time with courage and grace. I want to share just a little bit about Dorothy here. <laughs> Dorothy, my mom, she was an amputee, uh, bilateral, I mean, both legs were amputated, one above the knee, one below. And at age, she was about 68 when she had that done. Um, she was bad diabetic and she was medically, what they would call in the medical um, field, they would call her a medical train wreck. She had so many health problems um, from being a diabetic mostly. And... Um, the physicians told her that um, she very likely would not be able to learn how to use a prosthesis and that she probably would be in a wheelchair and that, um, you know, it was up to her if she wanted to try. Well, my mom was someone who loved a challenge. So I'm here to tell you that she not only walked on those prosthetic legs, she danced. So um, we can dance through this time. Um, so getting to the story I want to share. She used to wear a bee, a little pin that she bought from QVC. I think she was addicted to home shopping. So <laughs> she bought this little pin and she wore this bee pin to remind herself that bees According to the laws of physics, bees are not supposed to fly. So she wore a bee and reminded herself that she could do the impossible. Well, fast forward to now, my mom is gone and I have her bee pin. Um, but what we do, actually my daughter-in-law has it right now. But what we do between my daughter, my daughter-in-law and I, um, we pass it back and forth when someone's having a hard time. So when someone's going through a difficult time, the other two, we will get with them and give them the, the pin. So um, the B pin has been a symbol of hope for us. So I hope that that encourages you. Um, fly, fly through this time. And, um, and Lord willing, I will be here, um, cheering you on the whole time. And, um, if you, uh, are a subscriber, thank you so much. If you're not, you might want to click that bell and, um, the subscribe button so that you're notified when I post. And, um, otherwise, um, I just want to say in spite of it all, in spite of not being in Cancun this moment, happy sewing. <laughs>